Hello, this is Patrick with 1CNC West, and what we're going to do in this video is demonstrate the powerful new geometric tools provided by 1CNC XR5. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to use the Arc command, but everything I show you can be applied to points and lines as well. So I'm going to left click on the Arc command, and when in the submenu, you can see we have absolute coordinate input, and we also have incremental coordinate input. Now if you don't see the incremental input, just click on this little incremental button and it will expand that. If you click it again, it will retract, so you can easily click on that. Down here we have a diameter. Now notice how within XR5, when I type in different diameters, the screen is instantly updated. So there's a lot of feedback provided by XR5. Let's put this back to 2 inches. Now I'm definitely going to show you the coordinate input both for absolute and incremental, but I'd like to show you some basics here first. I'm going to take the cursor and move it within the drawing area, and as soon as I do that, you can see that we're now snapping to grid points. You can snap along your axes, and you can even grab the datum if you'd like. Now if you're set up for inches, it's going to be snapping along inch units. If you're set up for metric, it's going to be snapping along metric units. Alright, so it's easy to come in here and snap, and I'm going to grab the datum and just left hand mouse click. Now also note within XR5, that when you're creating geometry, XR5 automatically references off of existing geometry. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to move over to the right, and as I do so, you're going to see a dashed horizontal line. That shows me that this new arc is at the same Y value as that previous piece of geometry. If I move underneath, we're going to get a vertical dashed line. Alright, so I'm going to come over here and just left hand click, and now I'm going to move down, left hand click. Notice if I move over here to the left, I can reference off of multiple shapes, and we'll left hand click. So it's very, very easy to do. Alright, now let's take a look at arc centers. I'm going to change the diameter to something smaller. If you want to use arc centers, no problem. Just go in and do it. Just take your cursor, move to the arc center, and left hand mouse click. It's as easy as that. How about circumferences? Let's dynamically change the diameter here to something smaller. How about 0.25? I can easily come over, for example, and create an arc at 0 degrees, one at 90. How about 180 and 270? You can also dynamically drag across the circumference as well. It's very, 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 very nice, very straightforward. All right, let's take a look now at coordinate input. I'm going to erase what I have here, and let's go back into the arc command. We're going to use a bigger diameter. Let's put two inches back inside here, and I'm going to roll out just a little bit. That looks good. All right, so let's head up here to coordinate input. Now, by default, it's x0, y0, z0. If you want to create geometry using those values, no problem. Just click OK, and every time you click OK, 1CNC is going to create the geometry. All right, so you can see now we have an arc created at x0, y0, z0. If you want to use a different value, simply type that new value in and click OK. Let's come down here. We'll type in minus 3 for y. I'll click OK. Let's go back to x0. I'll type in 0 and click OK. So the idea is that every time you click OK, 1CNC is going to create geometry. So all you have to do is type in your, your values. I'm going to type in 1.5 for X, and I'll type in minus 1.5 for Y, and I'll click OK. All right, now let's take a look at incremental input. Let's change the diameter to something smaller. How about 1 inch? And for the incremental amount, I'm going to type in minus 1 for X, and how about minus 0.5 for Y? Now what happens now is no matter how I reference the geometry, it's always going to be incremental minus 1 inch in X and minus 0.5 in Y. And you can see that instantly when I move the cursor on the screen here. Alright, so if I want to, I could grab the datum, I could grab an arc center. If I had lines on the screen, I could digitize the endpoint of a line, I could dig digitize a point, a vertice on a solid model. It makes no difference, so it's very easy to do. I'm just snapping grid points here. And notice how we're still referencing off of existing geometry. All right, so that's using the incremental input. All right, now let's expand on this a little bit. I'm going to just pan this up just a little bit, and let's use the line command. All right, now notice that as soon as I select the line command, that you still have your absolute input and your incremental input. Now, to create a simple single line, just left click and left click. And when you're finished, you right hand mouse click. Now I'm just sketching, and of course you're not restricted to sketching. You can use coordinate input, reference off of geometry, whatever you'd like. But I'm just sketching now to show you some quick techniques here. We can left click, and it's easy to create a vertical line. Just left click. And then when you're finished, right hand mouse click. If you want to create something more complicated, you can keep going. And notice how I'm still in the command. I don't have to re-execute that. I'm going to left click, left click, left click. And as I'm doing so, we're referencing off of existing geometry, and you just keep going. You go as far as you'd like to go. And when you're finished, just right hand mouse click. 
Now notice too that when the X are 5, you can easily join geometry. So if I want to grab an endpoint, you just do it. Just come up here, grab the endpoint, left click, and left click. When you're finished, right hand mouse click. Why don't we join these two pieces together here? That looks good. You can also grab midpoints. Just take your cursor, move it up to the line, and when you see that triangle, just left hand mouse click. We'll come down to this midpoint, left click, and we'll grab that midpoint and left click. When we're finished, we'll just right hand mouse click. You can even snap tangencies. Let's do that. I'm going to grab the endpoint here. I'm going to move up to the arc. Wait till we're tangent. You'll see the little tangency marker there in orange. When I've got that, I can just left hand mouse click. When I'm finished, I can right hand mouse click. Let's do that again. I'm going to grab, uh, let's grab that same point. We'll come back up. Wait till we're tangent. Left click. And when we're done, we'll right hand mouse click. So you can see that with an XR5, the user interface is very dynamic. There's a lot of powerful, easy to use geometric tools provided. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, we're going to keep exploring the new geometry provided by XR5. Thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.